This year, the Sooners have been dominant. Featuring an explosive offense with weapons all over the field. Holly, what crowd! And it's a sprinting touchdown! Led by the most dynamic player in college football. The magic of Mayfield. Who's poised to be the first player ever to walk on and then win a Heisman Trophy. For TCU, there's pride at stake. We don't have another day. We don't have another second. We don't got another minute to wait. A chance to avenge an early loss and an opportunity for one of the best defenses in the country to prove their worth. For one side, a playoff berth is on the line, and the other wants nothing more than to spoil it. Mayfield to throw it. Touchdown! A showdown in Arlington. TCU, Oklahoma, the Big 12 Championship. From Arlington, Texas, welcome to the 2017 Big 12 Championship on Fox, presented by AT&T. For the first time in seven years, there's a Big 12 title game, and this one pits the 11th ranked Horn Frogs and the Sooners at number three, perhaps on the verge of the college football playoff. Welcome inside, Joe Davis with Brady Quinn. You know, the Horn Frogs started this season unranked. They were a bit of a surprise sitting in the 10 and 2 to get to this championship game. For Oklahoma, different coach, but same story. Lincoln Riley steps in, and behind the Heisman front runner at quarterback, they sit at 11 and 1. He's been the best player this season in college football at the most important position. He leads the country in touchdown passes, completion percentage, and ratings. And what makes him so successful is his uncanny ability to buy time in the pocket while still keeping his eyes downfield to make the big play. Oklahoma leads the country in big plays this season. That's why their offense has been so dynamic, and that's why they're playing this matchup today. And look, Baker Mayfield, he's a very interesting cat. Look, he's an edgy player. He plays with a lot of attitude, but this team plays off of his attitude and his edginess. That's why they're playing in the Big Show Championship once again. What do you think of the Horned Frogs? You think defense, right? No different with this edition. Gary Patterson has one of the nation's best once again. And it's a complicated defensive scheme. A mix of coverages, defensive fronts, and pressures. They lead the Big 12 in sacks this year. And really, with the exception of their game versus Oklahoma earlier this year, they've been the top defense in the conference. And when you look at some of the struggles that they've had in that game up in Norman, Oklahoma, it's been stopping the gap running schemes. TCU didn't do enough uh, putting guys on that side of the line of scrims to be able to fill some of the run gaps. And you can see it's a clear running game to the end zone. It started with the power run there, and they come back later on in the game with the counter schemes. And it's incredibly difficult to stop, but they've had enough time to kind of make these adjustments, and it's going to come down to whether or not TCU has made enough adjustments and if they can execute it in today's Big 12 championship game. Yeah, I'll have another opportunity here less than a month after they met in Norman. We've got the Horned Frogs and the Sooners, the national anthem from Arlington on the other side of this break. Closer to kickoff right now, we go to the public address announcer, Jim Jennings, for the introduction of the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise, join in the playing of our national anthem as we honor those, past and present, who protect the values of our great nation at home and abroad. The colors are being presented by the Arlington Independent School District, Texas 31st Air Force Junior ROTC. And performing the national anthem is the pride of Oklahoma marching band.
The teams take the field for the Big 12 championship game coming up. No team has won more Big 12 titles than the Oklahoma Sooners. Today, they look for a third consecutive conference crown and perhaps a spot in the college football playoff. To introduce the Sooners, the winningest coach in program history, Bob Stoops. Here come the Sooners. You better not be the one this is Oklahoma football, home of Sooner Nation. Because we going to blow your mind. Touchdown, Sooners! Where champions are bred, loyalty runs deep. We are a band of brothers that live by the colors of crimson and cream. Smash mouth OU football! Our offense fueled by grit and determination. What a play! and a fearless Heisman contender driven by a single objective. Oh, my goodness. Win. Baker Magic Mayfield. On this day, we fight for the Big 12 crown. We gonna blow your it's time to rise above the rest. With the speed, look out. For there is only one Oklahoma. Boomer Sooner. Ranked number three in the country. These are the Oklahoma Sooners. Let's do it already. Opening kickoff from Arlington on the other side of the break. On third and seven, TCU doesn't show any pressure, and they bring only four. On the speed out, Michael Jones has it for an Oklahoma first down. Four first half touchdowns and 290 total yards. He swings out of the backfield on second down. Mayfield scans the field and drills one for Andrews and a first down at midfield. Option play. Anderson's got a first down and then some inside the 30. A gain of 12, and Oklahoma's converted a fourth down. Out of the pistol on second down. Here's Brown. Gets a block. Marquise Brown shifts his way into open space and stumbles back. You know, he was close to the first down marker, but then went backwards, and it'll be third down in about three. Brings on Seibert, who will attempt it from 41 yards. The junior out of Belleville, Illinois, has nailed 12 in a row. And Oklahoma has points on its opening drive. Through for 325 and three touchdowns against the Bears. TCU starts its day with a Kyle Hicks run. Nowhere to go, and the ball comes out. Scooped up and taken into the end zone for a touchdown. Scoop and score, Caleb Kelly. Disastrous start, TCU. Let's take another look. This seemed pretty definitive that the ball was out before Hicks was down. You can see right there, Amani Bledsoe able to get that big paw in on the football. And there's Caleb Kelly. Take it to the house. And the key on that play, Caleb Kelly actually brought pressure off of the edge. So good hustle by him, continuing to run down the football. No surprise, Shea Olalalu is in a running back now. Kenny Hill on the wall, being chased from behind. Throws almost intercepted. Stephen Parker breaking in front of Jalen Rager and probably should have had it. And this is a ball you just cannot throw. As Kenny Hill rolls out to his right, you're going to see Rager kind of start to cut flat, but he's not open. And clearly, Stephen Parker started to undercut that. TCU's very fortunate this wasn't an interception. The DR 6'1", 215 pounds. 
LSU transfer has a first down. And now Hill in trouble. Trying to get away from Okoronkwo and does to Olamalua. Body slammed down by Oklahoma's leading tackler, Emmanuel Beal. Third down and 12. Mayfield quickly outside. They'll need open field tackling. They don't get it. Marquise Brown, first down across the 45. A gain of 31 for the first-year Juco transfer who's really come on. Well, you can see the miscommunication. You see Nico Small. You see Ridwan Isahaku. Both of them were signaling they needed an additional defender. They were a player short, but Oklahoma took advantage of it. Third and one. They bring Jackson Ewells and Dimitri Flowers into the game. It's Mayfield to sneak it for an Oklahoma first down and more. Mayfield to the 38. On first and ten, Mayfield to throw all day to scan the field. Now the pocket collapses, so he slides up and goes to the sideline for Flowers. First down to the 21, to the first team all Big 12 fullback. I call Dimitri Flowers a Swiss Army life because he can do so many different things, although he's much bigger than that. Watch the concentration. This guy can run the football effectively. He can release downfield. He's great in pass protection and run blocking. He's incredible, and he helps this Oklahoma offense be versatile as far as the different things they can do with the different personnel groups. Mayfield over the middle. That's caught by Sermon. A first down inside the 10. Something Oklahoma was able to do with success the first time around earlier this season. Mayfield sets. In zone Andrews. Touchdown, Oklahoma. And they've exploded out of the gates on the Horn Frogs again. Well, how often do you see this? Baker Mayfield under center. Doesn't happen very often. He's going to fake, fake, drop back. And you're just going to see a little short post route by Mark Andrews to the back of the end zone. Everyone's eyes are caught up with the jet sweep fake, the run fake. And there's Mark Andrews just finding that soft spot back and behind the TCU secondary. Once he gets going, he's tough to bring down. He'll retreat it off play action, running out of time, and going down. It's Amani Bledsoe, who forced the fumble on the first play from scrimmage. Coming up with a sack. Second down. One of the things Oklahoma does extremely well when rushing the quarterback is they get those high edge pressures. See Caleb Kelly right there? They force them to scramble up into the pocket. And they lost that Iowa State game after a big lead. Here's a trick play to open the second quarter. The former high school quarterback, Desmond White, couldn't find anybody open. Able to get back close to the line of scrimmage where D.J. Ward brings him down. And a little more familiarity. His drive begins with a Baker Mayfield pass play. Steps up and takes off into open space. Baker Mayfield across midfield. Short off speed over the 30. A 56-yard run. It's hard enough to try to stop Rodney Anderson, and then all of a sudden you try to stop this pass attack. There's just not enough guys around the line of scrimmage to account for Baker Mayfield. And look at the speed, if not for the angle of the TCU secondary. I think Mayfield's taking that one to the house. Once again, Baker, he's got something in the oven. He's got something cooking. Oklahoma trying to answer right back. Here comes Rodney Anderson. He's close to another first down, and we go down to Bruce. From the 49-yard line, Baker Mayfield and the Sooners open this drive. The Rodney Anderson run, and Anderson looks plenty healthy there to the 41-yard line. Bruce Feldman letting us know that they've had to tape him up a little bit extra. The trainer's looking at him, but he's saying he's good to go back in despite dealing with the left ankle that's bothering him. Mayfield finds Andrews, who's chopped down by Nico Small. That's a first down inside the 30. Small will have to come out with his helmet coming off. On fourth down with a hard count, they get Chris Bradley to jump. Was there any movement from Oklahoma? Mike Defee and his, his crew have done a tremendous job today of making sure they get everything right, but even the substitutions, there's been a lot of personnel changes, make sure they hold the ball, allow each team to have an opportunity to sub. 
Offside. Defense, number 56, moved in the neutral zone, causing the offense to move. Five-yard penalty, yardage results in a first down. It's hard to hear, but this is just a savvy move by Baker Mayfield, who's obviously a really experienced quarterback. And when you're on a neutral site, you don't necessarily think about using the cadence as one of the things in your toolbox to try to get the defense offside. Mayfield pulls. Banigou can't get it. Mayfield crosses the 10, second and short. Mayfield the throw. In zone, Andrews again. Touchdown, Oklahoma. And it's all about the play action pass fake. Watch as he sneaks in behind the soft spot and watch these guys suck up on the run. And just an open window in the back, and it's too easy, but that's the advantage you have as an offense when you stay in third and two, third and three. So the lead back to two scores. Kenny Hill, very efficient so far. Jalen Rager gets cut down by Parnell Motley. Moved back into the lineup with a great week of practice a few weeks ago and was really playing well. Kenny Hill has no chance. That play was blown up from the start. Caleb Kelly was there. Okoronkwo was as well. On first down from the 40 against a three-man rush. They'll check it down, Hicks. Kyle Hicks tripped up by Parnell Motley. Couple of big open field tackles on this drive. 11th play of the drive and started back at the 25-yard line. Hill with a deep drop. Down the seam, Rager can't hang on with a coverage from Motley again. Hill on a quarterback draw. And stopped by Will Johnson. They'll use a timeout with seven seconds. So now, and they'll look to throw it to open the second half. Downfield shot. It's broken up by Parnell Motley as they went for Jalen Austin. Mark Andrews one on one. They're going to have to devote two defenders to him. A fake to Hicks and a throw to DRs who can't bring it in. Trey Norwood jarred it out of there after it hit off DRS's hands, third and ten. Bobby Anderson motions out. Mayfield looks the other way. And a man comes open. It's Michael Jones on the first play of the second half. Jones goes 55 yards for an Oklahoma touchdown. about how much time Baker Mayfield had in the pocket. He was looking to the left, waiting for Michael Jones to get open, slow off the football, but then he comes back inside off the return route and just, just a mismatch. Why Matt Boson is covering Michael Jones is a mystery to everyone. Yeah. They boot Kenny Hill. Okoronko is waiting for him. Here to depend on the spot. Parnell Motley and Obo Karanquo knock him out of bounds and Oklahoma slams the door as TCU gets a little bit cute on fourth and inches. And this to me is something I hate. Look, you've got an open gap here, an open gap here. I know they're covered up, but you can find a way of getting yourself less than a yard. Why take the football back to then run a boot? You're not fooling anyone in that case. You're losing ground to try to gain ground. This Oklahoma defense has too much team speed, whether it was Okoronkwo or Motley. Needed a foot. Just don't like the play call. How about the game that Motley's had so far today? Yeah. Open field tackles. We see him recovering right then to stop the conversion. See what Oklahoma goes with on first and 10 from the 40. Played conservatively. Anderson with a big hole off the right side for eight or nine. Those runs in the first half start to weigh on you in the second half with that big offensive line. On second and short, they'll throw it deep. Marquise Brown behind the defense for an Oklahoma touchdown. And just like that, the Sooners have broken it open. After the big first half that Mark Andrews had, 
Watch the attention that he grabs in the TCU secondary. He basically ate up every defender in the middle of the field. Watch what happens. He's going to drop back. Everyone's going to drop back. It's going to be a little hesitation. And then beating Isahaku downfield. And the problem for Isahaku was once he turned to look back after Brown got by him, you're never going to be able to catch up. You got to go find that wide receiver, get back to his hip. Yeah, both those coordinators are talking about those Texas Tech ties. In fact, Cumby was on the team. O'Reilly was a student assistant for a couple of years under leash. They lose the yard here with Alana Lua, and it's third down. On third and six, they run it, and Hill is swallowed in the backfield by Kenneth Mann. That's twice now. I mean, a third down play call, I don't know how you think a zone read is going to get it for you. And there's Kenneth Mann, and you can see at the snap of the football, he doesn't commit so much to the running back or turn his hips. And I think that's what fooled Kenny Hill into thinking that he could try to get by him. And Play action. Another throw for Mark Andrews. And a first down to the 40. Beating Nick Orr. For a gain of 17. Austin Seibert handles all the kicking duties for the Sooners. This one. Wow. Jordan Thomas, a much maligned season at corner, makes a fantastic special teams play to bat that thing back inside the goal line. The senior out of Klein, Texas. Watch this. The focus and concentration. It's one thing if you're down there as a punt return, it's hard enough to catch it. But as one of the gunners running down to try to down it, typically you don't see cornerbacks with those sorts of ball skills. No, yeah. And how about the punt by Seibert? And you mentioned it. You know, he was one of the best cornerbacks in the Big 12 last year. Came into this year, battled through a little bit of injuries. He hasn't played as well as he has in the past. Good to see the senior with a nice play here in the Big 12 championship game. So TCU starts from its own four. Play action. Nobody open at first. Now into double coverage and picked off by Will Johnson. Oklahoma takes it right back, taking advantage of the special special teams. And these are just the back-breaking decisions that you cannot make. He's going to eye up the quarterback the entire time. And this play action fake and the entire play just took so long to develop that it allowed Will Johnson to get his second interception of the season. Put the awareness too to get his feet down, go up and get the additional yards, the fifth year senior out of Baltimore, Maryland. Tiger from 40. Right down the middle. Carry on Johnson has a big game today. Or if Jonathan Taylor runs all over Ohio State, they could get in my in my third spot. Okay. Emmanuel Beal stopping Desmond White. You look at their conference rankings and defensive stats. They're in the top half in just about everything. Kyle Hicks brought down by Emmanuel Beal. Emmanuel Beal was there, but Parnell Motley came flying up at the cornerback position to set the edge and basically turn back Hicks to Beal. The back end has another call, and then they divide the field by field and boundary for their call. Anderson, good vision, and he's got a first down. He's now minutes away from his third Big 12 title in as many seasons as the starter. Anderson again, first down. Think about his career. Knocked down. Hill catches it. And he gets the yard. Helped the old completion percentage. Here's third and 19 with Alana Lua motioning out. Turpin on the screen. Nowhere to go. Will Johnson drops him after a gain of three. The Big 12 champion, because they have to play the additional game, and it looks like Oklahoma would have been a shoo if they didn't have to play. Trey Sermon on first down. 
you know, there were there's years like in 2014, right? The, the first year we had the playoff career, whether it's in Nebraska or on into the NFL. Sherman, good patience, good strength. First down in the TCU territory. 18 yards for the true freshman out of Georgia. And, and you know, <laughs> I, I, it's like I calculate, um, but I think he takes so much pride in this that, you know, and it really shows in the leadership of his crew, I have to tell you. Both down and one. They keep the offense out there. Hand it to Sermon for a first down. Our AT&T play of the game goes all the way back to the first TCU play of the day. Oklahoma had a field goal on its first possession, but then on TCU's first play from scrimmage, Caleb Kelly scoop and score off a Kyle Hicks fumble. They brought a blitz off the edge, and Caleb Kelly wisely continued to follow the play, and he was rewarded. A big mistake by Kyle Hicks, putting that football on the inside arm, not on the outside arm, and allowed Bledsoe to be able to knock the football out. And then Kelly with a touchdown. And Lincoln Riley doused is the first coach, the youngest coach, to take his team to a conference championship game. Only coach to do that his first season. Offense. Five yard penalty, first down. And now he's going to win it. And think about Bob Stoops and his career at Oklahoma. Won a national championship in his second year. Lincoln Riley win it in his first year. You know, he'll be only the fifth coach in FBS history to get 12 wins in the debut season and a chance at two more in the playoff. Chris Peterson, Tom Herman, Larry Coker, Brett Bielema, the group that he joins as they start to run the clock out. Incredible to think what he's been able to accomplish and as well as Baker Mayfield. Over the course of his career at Oklahoma, He's going to go down as one of the more prolific passers in their school's history, but the way he performed. I mean, the young man just wins. Fueled by all the times he's been told he's too small, too slow, not this, not that. Goes all the way back to the days he used to lose the family games of horse out in the driveway to his brother and his mom and his dad and then his days in junior high where he had to crow hop it just to get the ball downfield fueled by all those times and here he is with a third big 12 title now all that's left the details Oklahoma has the college football playoff in its sights And for TCU, it may feel like a disappointing season, but coming from where they were just a year ago, a dramatic improvement. This is a team that's still got some youth. It's a team to look out for in the future. But obviously, heartbreak and disappointment for a school that's just down the road. Bruce has a guy who had a career day, Mark Andrews. Mark, two touchdown passes today. For you, what was really clicking against this defense? Uh, really, it was just great play calls, um, getting put in the right situation, and, um, you know, we prepared all week for, for the moments like that, and, um, you, know, I, you know, I thank Coach Riley and my teammates to help me get those touchdowns, and um, it was really just preparation. Your quarterback, Baker Mayfield, is running away with the Heisman this year. What impresses you most about him? He's incredible. Uh, first of all, he's, a, he's the best leader I've ever seen. Um, he's electric, you know, I've never played with a guy like that, and he's really special, and it's an honor to be able to play with him. For you as a leader of this team, Lincoln Riley's first year, the transition from Bob Stoops to him seems like it's been pretty seamless. For you, what has stood out about this season as you go to the playoff? Just our team chemistry. You know, we've always stuck with it, um, especially, you know, after our first early loss. You know, this team came together and really, um, you, know, you know, fought back. And it's, it's awesome to see this team to be able to do that. And, um, you know, we're in a good place right now. All right, thanks, Mark. Hey, guys, back to you. All right, Bruce. Baker Mayfield and the return of the Big 12 championship game does what he's been doing his whole Oklahoma career. Four touchdowns through the air and a third consecutive Big 12 title. He'll present the hardware to the Sooners on the field here at AT&T Stadium in just a moment. Stick around. The Sooners are champions of the Big 12. And we've got more post-game coverage coming up.
The Big 12 Championship on Fox, presented by AT&T, is sponsored by State Farm, here to help life go right. Back here in Arlington, and a trophy that was made in Oklahoma will head back to Oklahoma for the presentation down to Petros. you guys have put together uh, unbelievable team you know we have great coaches great players we've been through a lot a lot of ups and downs and we stuck together through it all that's what i say is most special about it now you've thrown for over 70 percent over 40 touchdowns have you done enough to win the heisman trophy i'm not worried about that i'm going for a national title ladies and gentlemen to present the big 12 championship trophy big 12 commissioner Congratulations, Lincoln, on behalf of all 10 members of our conference. You uh, put together a great, great football season. Good luck in the postseason. season we weren't good at many things but we're good at winning football games that's what you do at Oklahoma and this is a, a special moment special moment all right uh, so proud of these guys we're gonna enjoy this one here tonight and then uh, we got bigger things to come how do you start to prepare for the championship when does that begin after we celebrate this one you enjoy it coach Good congratulations day. ladies and gentlemen one more time for your 2017 I'm just wondering when, when The Rock and Steve Austin are going to take the stage. <laughs> oh, just incredible. I, I can't even see him down there with all the confetti. So the Sooners, by blanking TCU in the first, blanking TCU in the third, and exploding in both those corners, quarters, control this one handily. They win the Big 12 championship. They're third in a row. It was fun having the Big 12 championship game back. 41-17, the final. We'll get you back to Rob Stone in Los Angeles for more post-game coverage right after these messages.